All right, let's talk about EKG changes which you should not miss as clinicians. So top killer EKG patterns, you cannot miss those. All right, so this is the first one and I'm gonna pause for three seconds and give you time to think. What's your diagnosis here? So let's take it step by step. So you are seeing some ST elevation and if you look this carefully, you are seeing some ST elevation in lead one, lead AVL, some in V1 and V2, and some ST depression in lead three. So there are some ST elevation in lateral leads, right? So if I draw heart here with all those limb and augmented limb leads cross section, what is this lead? This is one, this is two, this is three, this is what? AVL, this is what? AVF, and this is AVR. So you're seeing ST elevation in lead one and AVL. So this is high lateral, high lateral STT changes. So, and of course you are seeing some hyperacute T wave. The, the height of T wave is actually matching the QRS complex. So high lateral STEMI. So this was the old word. So STEMI was something which is still used in practice, but STEMI, what it means is ST elevation MI and the entire coronary artery is occluded. Now they are moving away from using STEMI and now they are using the word occlusion myocardial infarction. Like for example, in this case, they can also say this is a high lateral STEMI or you can also say this is high lateral OMI. The reason to transition from using STEMI to OMI is like even um, if you have end STEMI, there, are, there may be few cases where you can have entire coronary artery occlusion. So instead of using STEMI, now they are moving towards using OMI. So this is high lateral STEMI or high lateral OMI. All right, let's look at the next one. I'm gonna pause here for three seconds again and give you some time to think. What is this? What do you see here? These are ST depression. So you are seeing actually ST depression in V1 through V5, maximally in V2 to V4. You are also seeing some trace ST elevation in lead three, just slight above the isoelectric line. And the important thing to note is ST depression here are horizontal and they are in the anterior chest leads and there is no reciprocal changes in AVR. So you are seeing horizontal ST depression in the anterior lead. That means there is something going on in the posterior wall. So this is posterior STEMI or also called as posterior OMI. Let's look at the next one. What do you see here? This. These are tall T waves, right? And uh, do you see any STD changes in the chest leads here? These are actually upsloping ST depression, right? From V2 to V6, you also see some upsloping uh, ST depression in, you know, uh, lead one and two. These are actually called as D Winters T wave. And now most of the guidelines are recommending to consider this as a STEMI equivalent. So if you see upsloping ST depression and tall T waves, peaked T waves, especially in the anterior chest leads, this is actually STEMI, you know, equivalent. And in approximately 2% of uh, cases, this may indicate complete LED occlusion. So this is a STEM equivalent. You should never afford to miss this. Let's look at the next one. Is that a bundle branch? Yes, it's a bundle branch. Now you also see spikes here. These are actually called as pacemaker spikes, right? So this is right ventricular paced rhythm with left bundle branch. Now, if you, if you see an EKG where the patient has new onset left bundle branch, that's already diagnostic of uh, something going on um, as far as the ischemia is concerned. So new onset of left bundle branch is, is a STEMI equivalent. And then if you already have left bundle branch, so how do you diagnose MI if you already have left bundle branch? Those are Scarbosa's, Scarbosa's criteria, right? So here what you see is more than one millimeter concordant ST elevation in V4 and V5. So let's find out V4 and V5. So this is V4, this is V5, and this is the isoelectric line, and the QRS complex is in this direction, and you're also seeing ST elevation in this direction. So concordant ST elevation, more than one millimeters in V4 and V5. So that's, that's equivalent to STEMI. And you can also see some discordant STD changes, like for example, in V2 and V3, if you look at V2, this is V2 and V3, 
the QRS complex is on this side, the STD changes are happening on this side. That means it's discordant. And this is more than five millimeter. This is the isoelectric line. So more than five millimeter of discordant STD changes. That's also diagnostic of um, myocardial infarction, especially STEMI. So this is also a STEMI equivalent. This is anterior enterolateral myocardial infarction. Let's look at the next one. What is this? This is actually sinus tachycardia. You can also see low voltage QRS complexes here. So what is that? Diagnostic of massive pericardial effusion causing pericardial tamponade. What's your next step in management? Of course, you can do a quick bedside. This patient needs help of CT surgery, right? You can either do emergent pericardiosynthesis and you can uh, or you can take the patient for surgery depending on what the cause is. What is this? This is severe bradycardia. You can barely see P waves. There are, you know, flattening. You can barely see P waves. Or if at all you see P waves, there is prolonged PR interval. And the QRS complex is here wide. What electrolyte abnormality can cause this? Severe hyperkalemia. Remember, tall T waves. And if it's going very bad, ultimately, this can lead to death.